this lesson we're going to talk about inverse functions. And then this here's the notation for the inverse. And it only exists if f of x is 1 to 1. That means if you put in a value of x, you can only get one value. You can't get two values or more. And the graphs of inverse functions can be drawn by reflecting f of x about the line y equals x. Which you should know what that is if you've um, taken algebra, which you should have done. Note, f minus 1 of x is not equal to that, which is the reciprocal, which you normally learn for negative powers in algebra. This is just a notation, it's not a... doesn't mean it can, it's a reciprocal. And he has the definition. If f and j satisfy, this is x here, for every x in the domain of f. And this is true for every y in the domain of g. And the domain and range of inverse functions, the domain of the, the new inverse function is the range of the original function and the range of the inverse function is the domain of the original function. Now, if you need to write that down, I would, because I'm going to have to rub all of this out. So write it down if you need to. Right, lots of room. I want to find the inverse of 7x minus 6. So f of x equals 7x minus 6. And this is the method for it. We'll change f of x to y. So now I've got y equals 7x minus 6. Then we'll, change, we'll swap the x's and y. So now I've got x equals 7y minus 6. And then we'll solve for y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 6 to both sides. And I get x plus 6 equals 7y. And then if I divide both sides by 7, then I get y in terms of x. So I get x plus 6 over 7 equals y. And then we'll replace the y by the inverse notation. So I'm going to write f is equal to x plus 6 over and because the other one was a line, you can rewrite this equation, if you like, as Because notice all I've done here is I've written this first bit over 7 and written this second bit over 7. That's all I've done, so those are basically the same in some sense. Now let's have a look at the other one. f of x equals the cube root of 2x minus 1. We'll write, replace that by y. We'll solve for y. First thing I do is I cube both sides. If you cube a cube root, you just get what's underneath the root. So we'll get 2x minus 1. Then I'm going to add 1 to both sides, so I get y cubed plus 1 equals 2x. Then, what I have to do is, I have to divide both sides. 
by 2. Oops, now I forgot to change the x's and y's around there. So it should be x equals the cube root of 2y minus 1. Then we'll cube root both, cube both sides. Then we'll add 1 to both sides. Then we'll divide both sides by 2. get y is equal to that and then we can replace this by that and we'll see that this is what inverse so remember with your algebra it's all right to swap sides of these put the y on the other side and put the function on this side because we're not doing anything to the equation we're just putting the y on that side and all this mess on the other side which is the way that most textbooks like to write it but really it doesn't matter so okay that's how we find the inverse of functions then what we'll do is we'll start off with a function f of x we'll replace that by y we'll then solve the equation for y and then we'll replace it by this inverse function f minus 1 of x. Okay, so that's the method for finding inverses. And I told you before how you can graph them. So, yeah. Any questions, just put them on the video.